Hey, welcome everybody. Ooh, I got new controls for this Screencastify thing. Check that out. Oh, it's giving me like a pen and stickers. This is all new. So like I could put like a boom, hundred, boom, hundred, boom, hundred. That's awesome. Or like, hey, I like that. Thumbs up. Or like, hey, Mr. Wiggin, that's pretty cool. That's pretty, pretty cool. Oh, I can't do it on, on my face. That's a bummer. I would put that on my face. Oh, that's awesome. What else can I do here? Uh, uh, I, I, I don't know. Like, oh, I can like draw and stuff too. Look at that. Oh, this is changing my life forever. Wow. Oh, super cool. I can put a rectangle on there. All sorts of cool things. Wow. All right, well anyways, welcome to lesson 2.1, Air Parcels in the Troposphere. Uh, don't worry, we'll talk about what the heck is the troposphere in just a minute. Um, but yeah, so today we're gonna be doing a number of things. We're gonna be really concerned with actually what happens um, and why, why do air parcels rise in the troposphere? That's first, and then what happens to uh, the temperature of these air parcels um, as they're rising in the troposphere? Specifically, what happens to the temperature of the troposphere? Um, or the surrounding air as these air parcels rise higher and higher. So let's start with our warm up. Um, and let me move that out of the way. Check it out. All right. So, what a beautiful drawing. Thank you, Amplify. I can see you put a lot of effort into this. Um, but hey, wait, really though, I like how simple this drawing is. There's not a lot of stuff to d uh, distract us from what we're supposed to notice. So, the simplicity actually really works with this. All right, what do we got here? It looks like energy from the sun. We have this energy transfer arrow. Remember, that's what these yellow arrows are always representing, some sort of energy transfer. We learned that back in thermal energy. Uh, here's the surface of the Earth. We have another energy transfer arrow coming up from the surface into this box of air. What do we call that? We got a special term for that. Oh, yeah, air parcel. Uh, that's what we call that little box of air. Um, okay, okay, so I see what's going on here, kind of getting, getting that picture. And uh, we have to come up with an answer to this statement. Which, which statement best describes how the sun heats the air? Is it A, energy from the sun is transferred to Earth's surface and some of this energy is then transferred to the air? Or B, energy from the sun is transferred to the air? Okay, let me, let me remember. So A is saying the sun heats the surface and then the surface heats the air. B is saying, nope, the sun heats up the air directly. You go ahead, take uh, like, 10 seconds and answer this. What do you think, A or B? Examine the drawing. What do you think? What do you think? Hey, if you said A, nice job. Um, and if we think back to ocean, atmosphere, and climate, we learned about this, didn't we? In fact, there's a video demonstration on my channel, if you want to check that out again, where we heated up rocks and we uh, heated up air, right? We, we had rocks and air underneath a heat lamp. Turn on the heat lamp, let them both uh, sit there for a long time. When we measured the temperature of the air that had nothing underneath it, we didn't really notice much of a change at all. But when we took a, uh, the temperature of the air above those rocks, we noticed a significant change. What were we trying to show there? We were trying to show this, that the sun's energy, for the most part, it just goes straight through the atmosphere, okay? And it heats up the surface of the earth. Then the surface of the earth is radiating that energy. And that's what heats up the air, okay? So again, it's not that the sun is heating the air directly. The air out there is, is not warming up because of the sun. The air out there is warming up because the surface is warm. And the surface is actually heating up the air. Now we could talk about why, but that's beyond the scope of what we're trying to uh, understand here. Um, you know, we could talk about the different uh, uh, types of energy that we're encountering here um, and energy transformation, but we're just sticking with this for now, okay? Um, that we just need to know the sun is heating the surface and then the surface is heating the air. All right, next, we're going to jump into the simulation. And uh, in the simulation, what we're trying to show here is what happens to how high um, an air parcel rises when you change the starting temperature. We're looking at, okay, here's the starting temperature of an air parcel. Does that, does that affect how high it will rise in the troposphere? So we're going to open up the weather pattern simulation. Do that with me right now. 
Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-
temperature. Don't worry, we'll talk about the troposphere in just a moment. Uh, but watch this as the air parcel rises in the atmosphere, okay? The air parcel is heating up. Uh, uh, energy is radiating from the surface of the Earth, and now it's rising. And, oh, take a look. What's happening to the troposphere temperature? Interesting. What did we notice? Well, let's go back to this question right down here. What do you notice about the temperature of the surrounding air at different heights above Earth's surface? Mr. Reagan, I think I know what it is. Great, what is it? Well, it looks like the higher you go in the troposphere, the colder it gets. And yeah, exactly. Uh, we started off down at the bottom at 15 degrees Celsius. Now we are at 30, negative 35 degrees Celsius. Have, have you ever ridden in an airplane before? Maybe you have, maybe you haven't. Um, if you've ever been in an airplane and you've sat at the window seat, you may have noticed ice crystals actually forming on the edges of the outside of the window. That's because when you're way up high in an airplane, it's cold up there. It's really cold up there, okay? What do you see? And we know this, we know this. What do you see at the top of mountains that you don't see at the bottom of mountains? Snow, right? Why is there snow at the top? Because it's colder up there. All right, okay, I get it. I, that makes sense, right? The higher you go, the colder it gets. Wait, Mr. Reagan, here's what doesn't make sense. Uh, go ahead. Don't warm things rise above cold things? Well, if, it's, if warm air rises above colder air, why is it colder the higher you go up? Wouldn't it be warmer? Ah, something else is going on. Something else is going on there, okay? We can talk about that too. But right now, the higher you go in the troposphere, the colder it gets. All right, Mr. Reagan, you keep using this term troposphere. What the heck are you talking about? Sorry, here we go. Um, troposphere is the layer of the atmosphere closest to Earth where weather happens. Now, maybe you knew this, maybe you didn't, but we actually divide Earth's atmosphere into layers. Um, and we're not going to talk about the other layers of the atmosphere right now. All we really need to know about right now is the troposphere. That's the layer that we live in. That's the la layer that weather happens in. Um, <clears throat> most of the air in all of Earth's atmosphere is in the troposphere. It's also the uh, thinnest layer of the atmosphere. But again, um, since we are using this term, we wanted to make sure that we uh, define it. So yeah, troposphere, the layer of the atmosphere closest to Earth where weather happens. This is where airplanes fly. This is, again, where we exist. Uh, most of us will never make it out of the troposphere unless, you know, Elon gets his space travel enterprise going. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyways, let's move on. Oh, number three, here we go. Eh, here we go, sorry, here we go, here we go, promise. Number three. <clears throat> Here's what we're going to do. Um, I'm going to do a demonstration for you. It's actually in a separate video that you'll have to watch. Um, it's, the video is called, I think, Weather Patterns <clears throat> uh, Lesson 2.1 Demonstration or Demo. Uh, anyway, it's on the YouTube channel. It's also linked to this assignment. What I'm going to do, I'm going to take a plastic bag, and I'm going to hold it over this uh, flame over here, and you'll see it in the video, and uh, I'm going to let it fill up with hot air. Okay, So I'm going to let that bag fill up with hot air, and the first thing I want you to do before you watch the video, predict what will happen when the plastic bag is let go, okay? What do you think is going to happen? I'm going to let this bag fill up with hot air, and then I'm going to let it go. What do you think is going to happen? Answer that. Make that prediction right now. Watch the video, and then come back to me. Hopefully, you watched the video and saw what happened. Um, so let's answer this together. Number two, what happened to the plastic bag? Why did this happen? Well, when we let go of the plastic bag, it floated into the air, right? It floated all the way to the ceiling. Um, when there was no air in the bag and I let go of it, it dropped. It just dropped straight to the ground. So why, why did it float when it was full of hot air? Well, like we said before, uh, when things are warmer, they're going to rise above the colder things. So even even though the, pla the, the weight of the plastic bag itself, the, the warm air overcame that and said, nope, we are going up. Um, I don't care, you're coming with me, plastic bag. The warm air was warm enough that it wanted to rise all the way to the ceiling. It probably would have rose even further. Risen, rose, rose further, risen further, probably would have risen, would have risen uh, even further. So why did this happen? We don't need to get into details of density at this point, but you could look that up. We could talk more about density if you wanted to and get into more description. 
Um, all we really need to know at this point is that it rose to the ceiling because it was hotter than the surrounding air. Let's click on the homework. Some of you probably already made this connection to hot air balloons. That's basically what we did. We just made a hot air balloon. Well, what is a hot air balloon? It's exactly what it sounds like. It's exactly what we did, but it's on a much bigger scale, right? So as you can see in the picture, that's a picture of a hot air balloon. Beautiful, beautiful picture too. That's nice. Um, this balloon, the, the statement down here, is like an air parcel. Explain why it rises. So if this balloon is like an air parcel, what do we know about air parcels? And what do we know about why an air parcel might rise? Okay, Make that connection to this hot air balloon. And uh, yeah, then you're done. That's your homework. So congratulations. Uh, you did it. You made it. And uh, come back. See me next time. Bye.